This video is sponsored by Karma, an app and Chrome extension that ensures that you never miss a price drop or a coupon code. DIY friends, welcome back to my channel. I'm Danny, your friendly neighborhood DIYer, and I am excited. It's been a while since I've sat down and chatted to camera. It feels it feels cozy and intimate, and uh, I'm excited to be here. Anywho, so this week we're diving into a series I like to call. Well, that's just so trendy. So <laughs> this series used to be called hashtag so domino because of my love for home decor and domino. But then I thought there was room for so much more love. So I am renaming this series hashtag so trendy, which allows this series to kind of celebrate my love of the trendiest home decor pieces out there. This is not about cost or time. It's about finding unique ways to recreate cool pieces in a fun DIY way. And this week we are focusing on two lighting decor pieces that I've seen come across my Instagram. And I am so excited to share these because I don't think I've ever shared this, but I sort of have like a weird obsession with creating cool lights. It's like my favorite thing to DIY. I'm delighted to share these projects. So let's not wait a minute longer. Editor! Roll the tape! Boop! Go, 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 go! Faster! DIY friends, we are in the studio. Welcome. Yes! So, the first light that we are going to tackle, it is the easier one of the two, but it's the one I'm most excited about because I have been planning this one in my head for a very long time. I also thrifted the item for this a long time ago, always had the intention to do something with it and I never did. And now is that time. It is the light time, the right time, right now. So the first light that I am trying to DIY are those minimal kind of plated globe sconces. Do you know what I'm talking about? They sort of look like a plate on the wall with a globe in the middle. I literally see these things everywhere. And the concept is rather simple all around, I think. So I knew I wanted to create some kind of version of this one day. And what feels like eons ago now, I was on Facebook Marketplace and I saw this large wood bamboo bowl on sale for $10. It wasn't on sale. It was just for sale. So I hopped in my car, I went and picked it up, and here we are now to present day. Now we have a bowl. <laughs> um, I just think this is cool. I have an idea of where I want it to go in my house. Okay, future daddy here. We're on my stairs. So the plan is to put it here. It's gonna live on this wall. I need to like add an electrical box there and then connect it to this light switch that's down here. And I don't know how to do that, but Jeff does. So he's gonna do it for me, but we aren't gonna be able to place the light here for this video. So I just wanted to let you know that it's going to live here one day and one day I'll show you what it looks like there. But for this video, it's not gonna live there. Back to the video. <sighs> Why are these DIY materials so expensive? Use karma. Who said that? It was I, Luna Louis. If you want to save money on all your DIY materials, you need to use karma. Uh, since when can you talk? And I decide what you say. And what is karma? You think traveling to space is cheap? Karma is the all-in-one shopping assistant. You can download an extension onto your Chrome browser or use the mobile app and start saving right away. Now I never pay full price for anything and you can be saving on all your DIY materials too. I use Karma because of all the different ways it helps me to save money. The lists are out of this world. <laughs> Do you get it? I made a joke. You can even create a DIY project list. Look, I made one for you. And Karma will notify you when the price drops or an item comes back in stock. You can even create multiple lists at one time and it even works as a mobile app to be notified anywhere. So you're saying I can create a shopping list for everyday DIY essentials like frog tape or even a production gear wish list for all of my expensive production gear? Wah. Gamma will watch these items for you and notify you when these items go back on sale. That way you can buy in bulk and never pay full price. So what happens if I need a specific item for that project but that item isn't in stock? Is Karma going to notify me when that item goes back in stock? Wah. Add it to your project list and Karma will notify you when it is back in stock. I also find it helpful to price check using my Karma app. I visit one of my favorite online stores to find products I need and add them to my personal project list. When it is time to buy, I can compare different prices and purchase at the best price. You're a genius! 
As a Chrome extension exclusive feature, Kama will also scan the internet for coupon codes at every checkout you go through online so you know you are getting the best price on your items. Louis, I love coupons! And last but not least, Kama offers cash back with PayPal with a select retail partners. Oh my god! Look at all those brands! I love Flower Beauty! What are you waiting for? Download Karma using this link or click the link in your description box. You can also use the link to get Karma's free Chrome extension as well. Okay, okay, I'm on my video right now and I'm downloading. I am gonna save so much money. <laughs> uh, wait. wait. So, the globe. Let me show you what I got. Went on Amazon, got this bad boy, 22 bucks. In total, we have now spent $32 on this light. Pretty stoked about that if I'm not. Probably shouldn't have opened the box. I'll show you what I wanna do. I have this hole saw. This is a bi-metal hole saw. I can cut through wood, it can cut through metal, but this is the base in the light. What I did was I just measured what this diameter was and it seems to be the same as my hole saw. Isn't it great when you just have the thing that you need to accomplish the project that you wanna do? It feels like I'm holding the power of the universe in my hand. And uh, now all we need to do is drill a hole into the middle of this fit this through, and then I think we're gonna have a light. So let's go make a wall plate sconce light thing. Let's also come up with a better name for this. Okay, we got safety first. We got a drill. I'm going to go through enough that it doesn't cut all the way through, hopefully. Turn it over and then go through the back. That is my hope. I'm not sure if it's gonna work. No fear, let's go. We got a clean hole. Now all I had to do was fit my light base through the hole, but of course it wasn't fitting as well as I hoped. It was very tight, so I tried to bend the metal of the light base a bit. I sanded down the edges of the bowl with my Dremel tool, and eventually the base fit snug as a bug in a rug, and I was able to just tap it in place with my mallet. I'm not gonna lie, that bowl made it very challenging to get those screws back in place, but you know, I had sheer optimism and crazy willpower, so I prevailed. Does this light bulb work? Hello, little friend, my little grumpy friend. How are you? Good, good, good. Just need to borrow your brain. Oh, does work. Your umbrella hat, sir. Thank you for your assistance. Is that not what we set out to do? This might have been the fastest DIY project I've ever made in my life. And I'm not angry about it. Let, let, let's go put this up and see if it looks cool. Ta-da! Check this out, DIY friends. A cool, budget-friendly, very trendy looking modern wall scones for my home. Of course, I use this spot in my home to show you all what it would look like installed, but like I said earlier, this is not worth going to live long term. But I gotta say, this looks so awesome, and I love that bamboo texture of the bowl. It's just such a great thrifted find for me, and I think it looks stunning. I don't know about you guys, but I would start your bowl shopping now. Moving on to the second light of this episode, this is definitely the more challenging light of the two. Challenging in the sense that it required more steps than the first one for sure. <laughs> so recently Domino posted a photo of Sasha Alexander's home. I believe this was a photo of her son's room, but the room features this beautiful umbrella hat looking light. And I was just like, I must have you like shut the front door and throw out the wallet. I must have this light right now. I couldn't find it for sale anywhere. I almost think that it might have been a DIY light. So if anyone has any information about this, please share it with your girl because I would love to give credit to whoever first came up with this idea. But regardless, I knew I wanted to DIY this light of some kind of iteration. So I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do it right now. Right now. Right now. Right this second. Right now. <laughs> So I needed to find a pendant light that would have the same look. And of course, this wasn't as easy as I thought. So what I had to do was buy this. 
So the light looks a lot like this. It has the structured top piece um, to the base, which is what we're looking for. And then it also has this matte black frame around it. All we need to do, get rid of that. And then we basically have the light that we wanted. Unfortunately, we had to pay for this to get it. But that's okay. So I feel like this is going to come off quite easily and all we have to do is just remove this little nut here. All we have to do is remove it and then we're good. Good old nut. Before we put this guy back on, what I wanna do is I'm gonna add this two inch washer. We should be good to go. All right, so let's go back to our inspo photo. Now, as you can see, there obviously is kind of like an organic shape to this kind of umbrella light looking thing. For that to happen, I need to create some kind of structure in the light. So what I'm gonna do is create kind of like a cross structure that's going to sit on the light and then everything else is gonna be a little bit more organic if that's makes sense. So what I picked up was two of these one eight inch brass rods. So they have a bit of structure to it. It's also going to match my lamp. Second to that, I picked up these one eight inch dowels. Now these have, as you can see, a lot more flex to them. So my hope is that I'm going to create a nice structure out of these guys. Um, on my light frame and then these are going to make up the rest of the light. But first things first, we need to cut these in half and we need to attach them onto the washer. And to do that, I have some JB Weld, basically welding metal to metal. So my goal is to weld these pieces to my washer. And that's why I wanted the washer to give me some structure so that I could do this. And uh, that's the plan, so let's go do it. Just to be clear, I didn't really need to add as much JB Weld epoxy as I did, but I guess in that moment, I just kind of thought I really needed a good coat or something. But watching that back now, I was just thinking, wow, Danny, you really went for it. love a good morning montage. I got a lot of work done that AM. But by the time I got going, that epoxy weld was cured on my washer. Those metal dowels were going nowhere. And I could finally start really building out the light. My first step was adding a five inch wooden embroidery hoop to the inside of the frame. So to secure this, I was using a raffia cord, which is actually a really nice natural looking twine. It's mostly used for wrapping, but in my case for a light and this stuff is strong friends and totally underrated and underused in my opinion. From there, I got my one eight inch wooden dowels cut in half to 24 inches. I needed 52 dowels in total for this old umbrella light, but luckily this wood is so light and dainty that you can just cut right through it with a good old pair of scissors. I spend $35 on dowels. Like sometimes DIYing is not a cheap endeavor. It adds up. All right, getting back here, I then took my wood dowels and I tied them to my five inch wood hoop. I was attaching 12 dowels per quarter section. And while this took a while to do, I don't think it was a terrible process at all. I then took hot glue and secured all the ends of the dowels in place so they wouldn't move around on me as I worked around the light. I also added a dollop of super glue on the ties just to keep those knots tight. And basically I just kept doing this until all four quarters of the light were complete and also added a dowel on top of each metal rod to complete the full umbrella look as the rods were only 18 inches and the dowels extended past these by six inches. Okay, so we're officially done the umbrella. I wanna show you guys what it looks like underneath because it's really cool. Like this could be a really cool light as well. Like the other one with just like a light in the, mi in the middle. You guys can do it at home if you want to. I'm gonna keep going, but I'm just saying like someone could stop here and it would be rad. Now I did wanna show you guys, I'm not gonna attach this yet, but once we are all done with everything, I'm gonna add a second washer on top. You see how it kind of just like hides all the ickiness underneath, and that's all we want. 
At this point, I needed to add the structure around the umbrella. So I had an 18 gauge wire and with the help of a buddy, mine was Jess, I attached one end of the wire to a metal dowel section and then loosely worked the wire around the frame, connecting each time to my metal dowel. Now that the metal frame was in place, I tied my raffia twine to the end of the metal rod, which provided six inches of clearance hanging out. And I just began to wrap the wire to hide it completely. I'm not gonna lie, this process did take a while, but I totally think it was worth it just to get rid of the wire so it wasn't gonna come through because there's more to come, so just wait. <sighs> this was a lot of work, I'm not gonna lie. It took two hours from the point where I turned off the camera. Now that the entire wire is covered, we can kind of go do the pretty coat is what I'm calling it. So while I was doing this, the lovely Jess off camera was braiding me a version of this raffia. So now we're gonna take that and we're gonna basically just wrap it all the way around the perimeter of this. I think it's gonna look really dope. So hopefully this works and hopefully we braid it enough. God, I hope so. Yeah. <laughs> Okay guys, so I got about halfway around this and then realized that we didn't have enough braid. I can only make it halfway. So right now, just for space, <laughs> Jess is outside. Hi. She's braiding. It's been really hot. Yeah, it so has been really hot. Really nice, like, I was sweating buckets in project one. So yeah, we're gonna we're gonna keep braiding. Actually, Jess is gonna keep braiding. <laughs> <laughs> and, oh! Uh, Storming! Uh, I'm gonna help her. We're both gonna get out of the storm together! Okay. Go, 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 faster! And just like that, I finally had my rope, so I got going on the second half, and before I knew it, I had a beautiful embroidered section all the way around the light, and it just looked mint. As the day came to a finish, I added all the finishing touches. I got the second washer on top of the doweled area, and with the rainy weather finally behind us, I took 54 wooden beads, strung them on a cord together, and using flow acrylic paint in the color navy, with added fluid medium in this, I plunged all my wooden beads into the paint to cover them all completely. I then hung them up in a tree to dry. I would also just like to step in here to say that I used a jute rope to do this process and I highly recommend you never do this. When the juke got wet, it started to like shed and stick to my beads and it just, it just wasn't nice. I'm just passing along the wisdom now so you don't make my mistakes. That's all I'm gonna say. Okay friends, I have gone as far as I possibly can. I have this drawing, it is like good to go. It's seven o'clock and I wanna go and chill. So I'm gonna leave this for tomorrow and then we'll finish it, hang it up and I'm excited. It's gonna look dope once it's up. So stand by, I'll see you tomorrow. DIY friends, it is a brand new day. It is a beautiful DIY day. We are gonna get this light finished. There is one detail that has been bothering me that I know we can fix, and that is the brass rod. So you know how we created, added those brass rods to kind of give it some structure. When you turn it over, you can really notice it, and it was a little, it was bothering me a little bit. However, I think I came up with a solution that is going to fix this issue. Now, I can't remember what the knot is called. It's a macrame knot where you put the, the rope in a four and then like pull it closed. I want to create, basically wrap the metal dowel and the, or the brass dowel and the wood dowel together just to like create kind of like a long rope look. And then I'm going to work all the way down and then stop at the knot. With that said, uh, Jess and I are going to tackle this together. This is going to take a really long time. And then we thought it would be fun to kind of make it into a game where we're going to race each other and see who wins. <laughs> Guys, you're rooting for me, right? The blue beads, they turned out amazing. Check this out. Don't they look like beautiful blueberries? That was a total side thought. <laughs> let's get going on this DIY. Let's finish this light and uh, let's see what it looks like at the end. So let's go. Jess? Yes. Do you think you can beat me at this macrame challenge? 100%. Wow, 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 it's going down. It begins, the macrame contest begins.
it's actually always the same cord that does the four. Just to be clear, I totally won the first round, but then Jess kicked my butt on the rest. Nimble hands you don't have. Lost you did. Weak you are. Finally, I used my glue gun to glue all of my blueberry beads onto the ends of my dowels. I also just really love how cool and trippy that eagle eye view of this project is right now. Whoa. And last, all I had to do was just spray paint my washers gold. Which, by the way, I definitely should have done this step literally like at the beginning before I secured it to my project. Yeah, 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 my bad. But once I finished that step, I got my light installed and this baby was ready to put up. Check it out. How funky and cool is this light, friends? It is just packed with so much personality and fun. Now, I put it up in my kitchen as a placeholder so we could see it up, but you know what? I kind of love it there. I mean, I would need to have the electrical box moved over if I want to keep it there so that it hangs over my table, but I gotta say, I loved the playfulness of this in this space. It's so rad. Now, if I created this again, I would definitely make that outer frame a little bit more towards the inside, just to give the outside dowels a bit more of the droop. I found it a little bit harder to shape than I thought. So I'm interested to hear your thoughts of what you could use to kind of make that feel a little bit more wavy. But I mean, overall, I think this light turned out amazing. DIY friends, thank you so much for watching this epic hashtag so trendy episode. Let me know what you thought of both the lights, which one was your favorite and which one would you make for your home? And of course, a big thank you to Karma for saving me some money and sponsoring this episode. A reminder to click the link in my description box to download Karma and save yourself some money on some DIY projects. I mean, yes. <laughs> As always, my friends, stay positive, stay creative, and keep on DIYing.